Hey, what's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of The Two-Man Game. As always, I'm one of your hosts, Cone, Connor, whatever you want to call me. Also, got my brother here, Ryan. Ryan, how are you doing? Not too bad, man. Studying for the GRE. If you young bloods don't know what that means, it's a test you got to take when you get old so you can get more money because your college degree doesn't mean anything. So studying yeah. for that. So we were going to actually record like 30 minutes ago, and I got kind of locked in with my math studying and so i missed mm. connor's text he was ready so we're recording yeah. now on sunday i take the test on friday so most of you will probably see this before i take my test so comment down mm. below good luck ryan to yeah, yeah comment good luck, ryan. Future endeavors. guess if he's gonna do well or not we'll, we'll, we'll let you know we'll keep you posted we should we should, we should set the line actually Ooh, if, set the uh, line? Yeah, we'll i don't set know the enough line. about the scores all right I'm, all right now all right so, so it's, a, it's combined there's two sections they both go from 130 to 170, right? Yeah, so it's technically we're, we're doing it from like 260 to 340, right? That's kind of like the yeah. thing. All right, if someone guesses exactly what I get, I will Venmo you $20. All right, we're, we're going with uh, the over-under is 320.5. I'm probably taking under on that. I'm not going to lie. Oh, you think that's uh, 310.5, 30, 309.5, so you can guess 310 on the dot. Okay, I like that. I'm going to take the over on that, though. I'm taking the over two. We're believing in Ryan here for the podcast. But yeah, yeah go ahead and comment gets, down below again. If anyone gets the exact number, though, I will Venmo them $20. And you are not allowed to put every single number. I guess yeah, yeah, one, one guess might, per comment. Comments might boost the algorithm, but don't do it. I mean, although maybe, but today we've got another episode of ranking positional rankings for y'all today. As you can see here, we've got a tier list S A B C D and F of 38 shooting guards. Uh, we did starting point guards for the most part last time. I tried to just do the starting shooting guards. There are a lot of guys who come off the bench that are too prominent to like keep off this list with the shooting guard spot. Also, a couple of positions where, like an example for this is uh, Herb Jones. Where is he at? Uh, right here, Herb Jones. The Pelicans have, or I went by ESPN's depth charts. They have them listed as a small four going into this next season, but like... Brandon Ingram's a small forward and Trey Murphy's a small forward as well. So it's all over the place. So I just decided to go with Herb Jones uh, here who played a lot of shooting guard last season as their shooting guard for this list as well as CJ McCollum over here. So you'll see as we get through it, if there's a player that's on this list, I'll go back and check the point guard video, or maybe they're actually coming up in the small forward video because the NBA is positionless. Also, before we get into this, keep in mind, this is all relative. So just because, and Ryan brought this up before, appreciate him mentioning this. If we rank a player as an A tier shooting guard, that does not make them better than all the B tier point guards. Like they might be better than someone, but it's all just positionally relative. So the S tier guys may not be up there with the S tiers. Cause in the point guard video, we had Shea and Luca, who I think both of us think are top five players. The S tier shooting guards, none of those guys are gonna be top five players. I'll let you know that. Also, your camera just lagged and uh, you were like frozen for a moment, but it looked like you were just listening and suddenly a cup of water teleports your hand. That freaked me out. That was wild. I, was like, what I, hope that, I hope that makes it to the cut when you edit it. Oh, it absolutely will. People will know what I'm talking about if they're watching here on YouTube, which of you are. Leave like and subscribe if you're over on Spotify. Rate five stars, download all that stuff. And then go, just go ahead and, like and subscribe uh, too. Also do that too and predict Ryan's score. But let's just go ahead and get into it. Uh, we've been having these episodes come up pretty consistently on Mondays. Um, I think we're going to try and keep that going, by the way, as well. So episodes every Monday, hopefully, or most Mondays, depending on what it looks like towards you get to the end of the off season. But let's start things off. I put a guy up here at the top that I feel like we will both agree is probably an S tier shooting guard in Devin Booker to kind of set the scale a little bit as we get through it. You will, you'll kind of see the way that it goes, but I feel like Book is likely an S tier shooting guard. Uh, there are three guys, I think, as we go through this that are kind of in that same realm that I would put as like the S tier shooting guards. But yeah, I think Book has an argument for being the best shooting guard in the world. He's great on both sides. Or He's a great offensive player. He's a pretty solid defensive player. I don't think people realize how improved he is. Low-key, one of the more well-rounded guards in the entire NBA was really good in the Olympics. Yeah, Book's really good. I think people forget. I know the Suns weren't in the playoffs this year, but Book had crazy numbers, and he's always had crazy playoff numbers, crazy regular season numbers, efficient. They had him playing the point guard last year, and it didn't always go great, but it wasn't his natural role either. So, yeah, no complaints about Book's game, to be honest. Don't let Noah Lyles let you – or don't let him hear the fact that you said best shooting guard in the world. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, Noah Lyles continues to be in the in the news with the NBA stuff. There was a video I saw today of him. Someone – he was doing some interview, and they asked, like, 
who do you think would be a good runner, like a good runner as athletes? And he was like, oh, what's that one guy's name? And he was like, acting like he did know what he goes. Oh, uh, the cheetah guy. And then someone off screen says Tyree Kill. He goes, that's it, Tyree Kill. Like, come, bro, you just talked about him a little bit ago. I honestly kind of dig the bit. I love that Noah Lyles is like leaning into being NBA Twitter's uh, biggest hated other athlete from another sport. It's funny. I'm a fan. But yeah, best shooting guard in the world. If you're the best shooting guard in the NBA, the best shooting guard in the world. We don't need to get into that. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm guessing you don't. Lyles. Someone at Noah Lyles. I'm guessing you don't disagree with a book as an S tier shooting guard. I was between S and F, but I think I can settle with S. Okay, we'll stick with that then. All right, next up, Dyson Daniels. Uh, Got traded to Atlanta, might be the starting shooting guard for the Hawks. Uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich is also in that convo, but he's kind of like a, you know, also that six man type player. That's an example of why we have a lot of guys on this list. So let's go with Dyson Daniels first. Uh, he's tough to put. I think D is where I'm first going. That was me, not F because of the, the defense is there and he's shown a little yeah. bit of offensive potential. He just really hasn't had a carved out role, really. Like even when mm -hmm. the Pelicans were like really injured last year, which I know he. I don't think he was a part of that, wasn't he, for some of the year? I could Dyson, be wrong. How many games did Dyson Daniels play last season? But it just never seemed like he had, like, a really high-volume role over there, which he might not necessarily have with the Hawks, but with the Hawks, you know, getting rid of DeJounte Murray, who was at times the guy taking the most shots, especially when Trey Young wasn't there. I mean, it's a good opportunity for him, I feel like, to maybe blossom mm. a little bit. So I think D is yeah. probably appropriate, but he could be better. Like, we're not saying that he's, like, going to be trash this year, but – He's one of my big breakout candidates. I think there's a world where he's in MIP talks. Like Dyson Daniels is a player I'm excited about. He was a top 10 pick, a great defender already. But yeah, the offense leaves a lot to be desired. 31% shooter from deep. Uh, has shown some playmaking flashes. He played 61 games last year, by the way. So he did miss about 21 games. Played just 22.3 minutes. He's going to get a lot more opportunity at Atlanta. I'm excited to see what he can do next to a guy like Trey Young because he's never had that elite playmaker next to him either. Obviously, he's had a lot of offensive talent like Zion, Brandon Ingram, CJ McCollum. But I think having that elite point guard can kind of help out. And if he develops that offensive game, he could be just a fantastic, you know, fit next to Trey Young in that backcourt. He doesn't really need the ball in his hands and can just knock down shots. It's just kind of about making that shot work. I do think there's a world we might end up moving him down to F. Just we have to see how this works out. And that, again, that's not saying he's a bad player. I think he's in a potential MIP guy. It's just all relative because the offense is kind of a struggle, but he's just so good defensively. So he'll probably stay here. Uh, also, yeah, list is subject to change until we get to the end of this, by the way. So don't come to this point. And I guess you can also, good for the algorithm, leave a comment down below if you get mad about something, but we might fix it before the end of the video. Uh, Chris Middleton is an interesting one. I'm my, first, a and B. my gut thing, first of all, was A. I feel like he's a good bar to set for the A right now because Chris has been really injured, but when he's healthy, he's still really good. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been an all-star pretty recently, like last year. 15 points per game, right around five boards, five assists, 50% from the field, 38% from deep. Chris is good when he plays. It's just at this point, a matter of if he's actually going to be out there. I think part of it, too, is the fact that Dame took a lot of volume away because he was always like the go to or the number two guy on Milwaukee's mm -hmm. offense. Like, even when Drew was there, like Chris Middleton was always the second option or, yeah. you know, with Brooke Lopez or any of the other, you know, people they've had filter in and out from there. And I feel like with Dame, he kind of had to take a step back offensively. But yeah. you saw in the playoffs, you know, when the Bucks had some injuries and great playoff and, stats. Like he was looking pretty good. So I do think the counting stats probably took a bit of a hit because of that. And I think we can both agree that he's definitely not the same player he was a couple of years ago. But mm -hmm. it's probably a combination of, you know, the lack of volume from, you know, Dame being there and Giannis still being there. And uh, he's been on and off the court a lot due to injury. So I think A is probably all right. We'll have to see how it shapes out. I was kind of between A and B, like definitely not S. I think but... the more that I think about it, I think A is a good spot. For yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll see who else comes into that A tier and then we can kind of look at it. Because one thing we really noticed with the point guard tier rankings is we saw it kind of shape out. And we're like, oh, maybe not. Maybe this guy is an A or maybe this guy yeah. is not B or whatever. So we'll see. Yeah, but I think A is good for now. We had to make a couple changes in that one if you didn't watch it, which if you didn't, by the way, go back and check that out. Uh, yeah, I mean, this year in the playoffs, 24.7 points per game, 9.2 boards, five assists, very efficient from like 48% from the field, 35% from deep. Isn't the best, but it's not bad, especially for a guy who hardly played at a number of times throughout the season due to injury. Like, I, I'm still a believer in Chris Milton. I think he's still really good. It's just more so the durability at this point. I think one thing I'm noticing too is a lot of these shooting guards are like hyper utility role players in a way. Yeah, so it's it's gonna be very interesting because I'm looking at I'm looking ahead and I'm seeing certain players like I'm seeing like Bridges and Divincenzo and Re like guys that like play you know and Malik Monk like I'm looking at some of these guys that are coming up. I'm like this is a lot of different players. roles. Yeah, like in point guards, it felt 
pretty similar for a lot of the guys, but yeah. shooting guards do like these type of guys do everything on the court or have so many different roles. It's, it's also not a position that's like that top heavy, like point guards. We were really struggling because so many great point guards, not to say there aren't a bunch of great shooting guards because there are in the league, as you can see with this list, but the point guard ones definitely had more like superstars at the top tier. Um, but yeah, uh, also, if you're wondering why Chris is the shooting guard, ESPN had him listed as the two and Torian Prince is the three going into the season. I think that's something I could see realistically. Maybe they put Gary Trent at the two and Chris Milton at the three, but I just decided to go with this. We got to stick with something. Christian Brown is up next. Uh, I think I kind of also want to put him in D roughly, uh, a bit more well-rounded than That Dyson. was my thing. Was I, I was like, I also was going to agree, not to cut you off, but I also was going to agree with the D, but I feel yeah. like he's kind of proved a little bit more than Dyson at this point. Yeah, that's true. I just don't know if I can put him up quite in C. Which, which is also like, where I was like, do we move Dyson to F now? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't feel bad about putting them in the same spot. Like Christian Brown, obviously it's he was like, a key role player in them yeah. winning the finals. But like Dyson is such a lockdown defender. Brown is definitely a little bit more well-rounded. But Dyson's got like that near elite skill. I think I'm cool with him being okay. here for the moment. Again, well, yeah, we'll see what shapes out. But yeah, he's got big shoes to fill this year with KCP out of the – out of Denver, he's gonna have to step into that starting lineup. Uh, Grady Dick coming up next had a really good end to the season. It was a bit up and down throughout the year, like eight point five points per game, thirty seven percent from deep. I feel like it. He's tough as well because his another numbers. D. Yeah, I think maybe another D tier. Grady D, baby. <laughs> Him and his jersey swaps, man. Um, <laughs> yeah. Grady's a weird one because he also feels like also again we didn't we said this at the beginning of the point guard tier list this is a combination of we do, we're doing like a little bit of projecting but not a ton in this it's more so where they ended last season how we view them going into this year basically they're going yeah um yeah I guess D is good I feel like we're gonna put a lot of guys in D tier and we're gonna have to split it up but yeah we we'll, come see back as, to we'll see as it goes uh Bradley Beal coming up next feels like another a guy potentially I agree I think that's a good spot for him. I know I have Booker and Beal on here, by the way, as uh, the shooting guard for this team. But they've got Tyus Jones at the one. They're both like shooting guards. Book like might play the three. It's weird over there in Phoenix. No. But like Beal had a good season, 18.2 points per game, over 50% from the field, 40% from deep, uh, over four and a half or right about four and a half rebounds, five dimes. Like Beal was good this year. And he, especially at that end stretch with Phoenix, he really found his footing and it felt like they were clicking a little bit. And then they did end up getting decimated the playoffs. But for a little bit, you're like, okay, you could kind of see the vision with him over there in Phoenix. I still don't know if I love the fit. But as a player, I still think Bradley Beal's pretty good. And he was really efficient in that more limited role, which honestly is better for him. I like Bradley Beal way more as that limited role, like score that's kind of a tertiary or, yeah, more so a third option than a second or even first option, uh, as opposed to what he was doing in Washington, where it's like 30 points per game, but they're losing nonstop. I think Beal's tough because he gets a little bit punished due to the fact he makes, you know, a crap ton of money mm -hmm. and that he's also on a team with kind of an odd fit. So I think that it's kind of created this like bad narrative that he's not, he's kind of washed or cooked, but I think Bradley Beal's still a really solid player. And as this list shapes up, there's, I think he's going to be ahead of so many people on this list. So I just think the narrative because of, you know, the money and because of the fit is just kind of, yeah. you know, water him down a little bit. But I agree with you. I think he's still an A tier. I still think he's got a lot left in the tank. And I think a lot of these teams would, if they didn't have to pay him the amount of money he makes, would kill to have him on their team. So, yeah, it's kind of similar to maybe not as much Tobias in his last season because it was rough last year. Yeah. But earlier on, I think it was like 2021, I want to say, there was one season where Tobias, after getting that big contract, was looking great. And it was like, could he be an all star this season? Yeah, I remember that. And a lot of people were still calling him like, you know, super overrated and stuff like that when people started saying that, because I think they were more so looking at the contract. Like a guy, he was absolutely overpaid regardless of what he was doing at any point throughout his tenure in Philly, but he, you can still be a good player and overpaid. Like just because you're overpaid doesn't mean you suck. So mm -hmm. big deal falls into that spot. Speaking of people uh, who suck, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan Poole is up next. Not a good year. Uh, I was actually going to put him in C though, I think. Yeah, I guess so. I still – I I know Jordan Poole did not have the year people were hoping for. I know it was a bad season. He's had a couple of rougher years. I still think Jordan Poole can be good I as, feel. like, a six-man or 
like the fact that he's trying to do so much in Washington, I think hurts him a lot. It was be- like towards the end of the season, they had him playing some games off the bench and he was like, it felt like he was figuring, like it felt a bit more natural to have him coming off the bench. I just don't know if he's a long-term starting shooting guard in the NBA. Maybe he isn't a really good team and he's not doing that much. Maybe he eventually fits into kind of like that Jordan Clarkson type role where he's can both start or be a six man. But I, I am still a somewhat believer in Jordan Poole. I don't think he's horrific, like you said. Yeah, I just I feel like the expectation was that he, he was going from a team where he was like a third or fourth option into a team where he could potentially be a one option any given night, and everyone just assumed it was going to translate. Like kind of like almost like Kuzma in a way. You know how Kuzma went, you know, to the Wizards, and he kind of broke out as this like borderline All Star, pretty solid starter in the NBA. You know, from mm. going from a team where he was kind of just like a role player. I think a lot of people saw the same for, you know, Jordan Poole when he went over there. And it just doesn't really seem like maybe that's just his archetype in the NBA, unfortunately, which there's nothing wrong with that. There's only a handful of players where that is kind of like their go-to game is to be the guy. So I do think that maybe he could be a little bit better in a different carved out role. But honestly, I could see his career kind of being in like limbo until he maybe gets traded to like a decent team to where he can kind of go back to a similar role that he had with uh, Golden State. Yeah, it might be – a weird like I, I could see it being kind of a Wiggins situation almost. Yeah. Where but it's a it's a weirder one because like he was obviously with Wiggins. He won a title, then he got paid, then it really didn't work. Now in Washington, it's not really working. Because how many years does he have left on this contract? Wait, two seasons? I think it's this one and next. And how much does he make? He makes right around uh 30 mil. It's a lot. Yeah, we want to talk about guys that were overpaid. Um he makes Oh no, it's still 2027. So it's 29 mil right now, 31 mil in 2026 and 34 in 2027. That's going to be the big thing that hurts his career because I don't know anybody that's going to trade for pool unless he gets like waived in his last season. He's probably going to be in Washington for the next three years. And this is a team that's kind of tanking because who's going to take on $30 million for pool? Nobody's going to do that. They want to also trade away something that's really bad in terms of like, yeah, like another sunk cost. Yeah, unless it's a like a salary dump or just swapping two bad contracts. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know. I don't know what his career looks like. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Jaden yeah. Ivy. I was gonna go see tier for him too. I think. I think so. Yeah, Ivy's an interesting player. Ivy got also kind of screwed this past season by um, the the weirdness with Monty Williams. Monty Williams season. did not like Jaden Ivy. He was a Jaden Ivy hater. It did not seem like he liked him at all. Remember early in the season when he'd be like the ninth man off the bench and he might play still a decent number of minutes, but he was coming off the bench. I think Julian Hayes getting minutes over him a lot. To yes. Yes. The guy who didn't even make the – he got cut from the French team. He was – uh, out of the league. Isaiah Livers was getting minutes over him. I believe that was last season. Oh, my God. Um, I remember that. Now I'm bringing, This is bringing back some dark memories. Bro, I, I'm so glad for Pistons fans that that era is over. I still believe in Ivy – there is a part of me that wonders if him and Kate are ever going to be like that good fit together. I, I, I'm not really sure. We'll have to wait and see. But like 15 points per game, efficiency was rough. Not surprising on the Pistons where Ivy's kind of this downhill attacker and a team that has negative spacing. Some of the worst spacing we've seen in the modern era, to be honest. It's going to be hard for him to kind of get it going. Plus all the weirdness of Monty Williams. Yeah, I, I still think Ivy had like a fine season. It wasn't bad especially for a young guard, but I, I think there's a lot bigger things in this future for sure. I was a guy I could totally see having this career arc to where people label him as like, not really a bust, but just never met his ceiling. And then when he gets like, you know, close to 30, he gets traded to like a really good team and just kind of like has this like mini breakout. And everyone's like, why was this guy wasted for so long? I, I don't mm-hmm. know. I, I'm just making up this career arc. Right kind of right kind of the Kyle Lowry career arc almost. We're not yeah. not like the whole bust allegations We're, thing, but really breaks out in the later half of his career. Kind the of Derek thing. White arc. The, the Derek White arc. We'll talk about him a little bit later. Uh, we got Malik Monk up next. I think this is where we get to be. I agree. Because this is what I was thinking when I was like looking ahead and I saw like Poole and Ivy coming up and I was just trying mm. to figure out where they would fit. I'm like, I think that Monk like fits perfectly right between them because I don't think he's like the star guy. Like Middleton and Beal on any given night could be your best player, you know. Mm. And, you know, I guess so could Malik Monk. But I feel like it's he just has little, those games. It's just a little bit different, you know. Like yeah. Malik Monk's really, really good, you know, but he's more of like that six man who's going to come in and get a lot of buckets and, you know, can 
he, I think his playmaking has actually gotten a lot better since he's gotten a It has. Right That's an underrated aspect of his game but, has been the playmaking development. I think B is just perfect. He's a very, very solid player. I think that B fits perfect for him. Yeah, arguably best six man in the league. He's up there in that conversation. It was him and Nas Reed at the end of the season in the award race. Malik Monk's really good. I think this is a good spot. We've got kind of these like, this is like our top tier shooting guards. It's like kind of could be an all-star, borderline all-star type of guys so far. You know, really good shooting guards. This hit is kind miss. of like young guys that are like hit or miss at this point. Yeah, it, it's going to be interesting. We may have to, we haven't used the D tier or the F tier at all. I don't know if we're going to looking at the guys, but hmm. Someone who's incredibly interesting is Jalen Green because beginning of the season, bad. He probably would have gone like the D, maybe C spot. Yeah. But end of the season, he was going crazy. He was like an A tier shooting guard. Uh, I'll I don't take a D for him too, honestly. Yeah, I guess this is one. I almost like this one where we have to project. How much do we think he replicates of yeah. last season? I just think the star potential, like, here's the thing. He has, like, I'm looking at, like, Malik Monk. I think Jalen Green has way more star potential. But I think yeah. his floor is also way lower. You know, you know, I mean? like a lot more of he's a such a big, player. he's such a big wild card. Volatile is a great word for it for Jalen Green. Like if we see the Jalen Green towards the end of the season, he could be one of these A tier shooting guards. I think I'm okay. I think I think for sure this is where it gets tough because I think I for sure I feel like Malik Monk is better than Jalen Green. Just I guess based on the consistency. It's like I was I, saying, though, like they can be in the same tier, but I think Malik, we can both agree that Jalen Green's ceiling is like head and shoulders above Malik Monk, correct? I guess so, yeah. yeah. Like Malik Monk does have those pop off games, but yeah, Jalen Green, I, I see what you're saying, especially like long term potential for sure. Well, we can leave him here for now and come back yeah. to it. Um, Austin Reeves is another guy. Uh, feels like maybe another B. I was going to say B as well. Yeah, I just I think, think he's not as much of like the score. Like he can be, I guess, as Monk or. Jalen Green, but I feel like Reeves does do a lot of things really well. Mm -hmm. Like he's, he's just like he's like not like extremely amazing at anything, but he's like very solid at pretty much everything. I feel like yeah, he's pretty much he is one of those guys that's like decently well rounded. Um, he started some games, came off the bench some games, had sixteen points per game last year, five and a half assists, four rebounds, decently efficient. Yeah, I'm okay with this for right now for Austin Reeves and. We get, yeah, we'll we'll go through it. I keep thinking like, oh, should we change this? Should we change that thing? We have not done enough to make any changes. Uh, Mikhail Bridges feels like another A-tier guy. I agree. Feels like someone else who goes up there. Uh, really solid player. I'm glad he's no longer in that role in Brooklyn where he was the one option that didn't make sense for him. I think he's going to be way more effective now over in New York. The numbers are going to go down a ton from some of the games he had over there in Brooklyn, but he's going to be a highly effective player more so than he was because I think the defense is going to come back. It was never at the level it was with Phoenix with Brooklyn because they're asking him to put up over 20 points per game. Now you put him over there in New York where it's Brunson doing a lot of scoring and Randall and you've also got OJ and Anobi. Mikhail is going to be fantastic. I dig it. Yeah. All right. KCP. Feels another like another B. B. Yeah. yeah, I think this is just like really solid shooting guards as well as Jalen Green, who's a complete wild card at times. Yeah, I think KCP kind of fits the B though, because like while he might not have the ceiling as like Monk or even like Reeves or Jalen Green at some points, he's just a very steady guy. He's going to mm. give you solid defense. He's going to shoot the three ball at a high rate and at a good clip. And yeah. he's just like a guy like you based on you saw the offseason, the Magic gave him a bag. And you mm -hmm. and there was a lot of teams that were interested in him, and there was a reason for that, you know. Like, yeah, he's not gonna, you know, be in all the headlines every night, but any team I think would really like to have them in their starting lineup as like that role player shooting guard. And I really do think the Nuggets are gonna really miss his impact this year. Yeah, he's an ideal shooting guard to have next to a star guard, absolutely. And you give that back, or even just on, really on any team, and like you said, any team would love to have KCP. There's a reason he was highly sought after. Um, this offseason with the Magic being the team that ends up going ahead and landing him. KCP is going to be right there. I love that acquisition. CJ McCollum, he's a weird guy where I don't know if he's quite at like, I don't know if I take CJ up here quite with these guys. With I like think maybe he, I, I'm, I'm stuck between, he's like B.5, you know, like between. Yeah, like, like CJ feels like a B, a B plus shooting guard. He's yeah. very strange because I'm, although I guess the season he did put up 24 rebounds, almost five assists. Like it was a really good year for him. I guess I, I feel like I think we're still I, keeping him in the A tier. I think he does get up to the A tier. I would rather have like, it's tough because I think I'd rather have, although I, I think him and Beal are almost kind of similar in that way. I think I yeah. might 
I actually, I don't even know which way I would lean at this point. Maybe Beal slightly. Yeah, it's tough. Also, there's no order in these tiers, by the way. I find myself just moving these guys every now and again, but it's not in order in the tiers. What he if means they're is in they're in order. He's just trying not to cause it's not, the No, because there were people, because I even said that last time there were people in the comments. Someone said something like, why is so-and-so over Ty- or Tyrex Halliburton over like John Moran or something like that? Or there was some <laughs> comment. And because they were in the same tier, and I said that they weren't in order, but the one person apparently did not hear that part. So I think I'm good with CJ and A for right now. Yeah, I, I can rock with it. Uh, I would assume Moo is had a very good season last year. I tweet out earlier asking for hot takes for a video I'm going to do. You know, hot takes video, not surprising. And someone commented that they think I would assume it would be viewed in the same vein as like a Jalen Suggs if he was in a bit more of a winning situation. And I thought that was interesting because he's not the defender that Jalen Suggs is. Suggs is an all defensive level guy. But I was really solid defensively this year. And he was a 50% from the field, 40% from deep guy, 12.2 points. Like I was very steady. I almost see him in kind of a KCP type spot at the moment. I don't know if B is too high for him, but I think he's definitely better than like the efficiency is so much more. I guess Pool and Ivy have more volume. So I don't know. I guess maybe Io isn't quite up to the level of those other guys. My instinct was C just because of like, I feel like the Bulls did have like a lot of roster decimation last year and he still wasn't putting up like the high volume numbers. Which maybe, which maybe like that's maybe that's a bad take. Which wouldn't yeah, I don't. Me, but I, I just, I just I'm looking. I don't like if, if I'm telling if I had the choice between those four guys in B tier or Desumo, I feel like every single time I pick one of those guys above him. Yeah, that's fair. I, I do think I would take the other guys above Io. I just I don't know. This feels like one. I feel like eventually we might moving might move some guys down and like open up some space in this seat. We'll come back to this. I yeah. assume move fans do not get mad. Uh, Terrence Mann is up next. Another C, I think. Yeah, I think probably a C for Mann. Uh, this is another defender. guy who's like okay at a lot of things, but I don't think he's like overly awesome at anything. Yeah, I don't. I, I still never understood why the Clippers were treating him like he was like this diamond in the rough. You know, when like all the Harden trade rumors mm-hmm. are going around and stuff. Like he's a pretty solid player, but isn't he? He's not even really that young, isn't he? Almost like high 20s he's he turns 28 this season yeah so like they they feel like the clippers are treating him like he was just like 23 year old lottery pick that was just like Mm -hmm. gonna blossom at any given moment there's a nickname for him in case y'all didn't know in basketball reference because i'm looking up his stats real quick from this past season on basketball reference they have nicknames listed have you ever heard anyone called terrence man the stat stuffer (laughs) i didn't think so i don't think if you out there have heard him called the stat stuffer please let me know because there was or, no or leave shot. us a link to where we can see that being said yeah uh like his number is like nine points per game three and a half boards 1.6 assists it's a part of it that wants to move him down to like d i could see him going up though with you know paul george being gone now i think he's gonna get a little bit more of a role yeah, yeah, but at the same time, like I think Ivy could take a jump. I was a lot more steady than him this past season. I feel like Poole could settle in a little bit more. I feel Man's, like I'm man above the guys in the D tier, though. Maybe I don't know. I think I think Christian Brown, and Terrence Mann are pretty like that. Feels almost interchangeable to me. Really? Yeah, I think so. You can move him down. Go for it. Maybe I don't. I, we'll, I'll I'm move him here for the moment. Maybe I'm a Terrence Mann hater. I don't know. We'll, we'll let's come All back. Six Clippers fans are coming for your throat now. Let's come back. Uh, Kyrie Irving is up next. I was going S. You want to go S? I, I it, do. It's interesting. This is one guy I did not think about until we got to this point as being one of the S tier shooting guards because there are two more guys. So I Wait, are scroll going down. to be S tier. Let me look at the list. There are two more guys on here that are definitely one. Yeah, I'd say two more. Yeah, there are two These more. These are the four that I had in mind for my S. I know we had four last time. Kyrie almost feels like the Brunson spot where – because because last time that was the one thing a lot – we had Shea, Curry, and Luga. Now a lot of people argue them as the S-tier guys, but we had Brunson there, and a lot of people were very like, oh, should Brunson be the S-tier? Should he be an A-tier? Kyrie feels like another one of those players. But I guess he did just go to the finals. He had a phenomenal season. Twenty, I guess, yeah, 26 points per game, five rebounds, five assists, 50-40-90. Almost like 0.3 percent off. Yeah. Okay. I I can rock with him being S. Like playing in like a rel, you know, with the roster that was kind of all over the place. You know. Yeah, I can I can rock with this. Also, one of the better defensive seasons of his career. 
Uh, next up is Norman Powell. Let me make this a little bit oh, wrong. I do want to say, say too, before we move on, I feel like this was the most vintage Kyrie. I felt like I've, I've like, as somebody who watches a lot of basketball, I feel like it was the most vintage Kyrie I feel like I've watched since maybe even his Cleveland days. Like maybe that's like a really bad take. But I just felt like some of the, some, the way he was just playing in Dallas was like, dang, man, this is reminding me of like the good old days of Kyrie. Mm -hmm. Like not that he had, didn't have good moments in Boston or Brooklyn, but. Yeah, no, I see what you're saying though. I mean, it, first time back in the finals, it yeah. felt like when, you know, he was playing alongside LeBron and this time it's Luca, where he's that great supporting player. He pops off for a few games, you know, he's playmaking, hitting crazy shots. I see what you're saying for sure. Especially when you take into account the postseason success. Mm -hmm. uh, Norman Powell is up next. I think I have C. Yeah, but Powell's Powell's another one of those guys who's like a really solid six man. I don't know if almost Did he have kind of a mid year last year though. It was not his best uh, compared to some of the other seasons. I know he had that really messed up face injury, but I think even yeah. more than he wasn't like. I mean, some of this like definitely not some of the seasons. I keep saying some of the seasons. He had a season and a half with the Clippers before, which doesn't feel like he's played for the Clippers for more than two full seasons. I feel like Norman Powell's been with the Clippers for a minute almost. I don't know. I always still think of him as a Raptor, but. I guess so. I don't know. For some reason, at this point, it feels like at least three years. But he last season was at 13.9 points per game. Uh, better efficiency from the field and three. I think with Harden coming into town, it took some of the numbers down for him. But he still had like a really solid year. 14 points, two rebounds, one assist. I guess he doesn't really have like the playmaking. Or the basketball, I feel like. Okay. We can put Norman Powell in the C for right now. I think we're going to have to – this C tier is the one that's going to have to change, I think. I think we need to – because Norman Powell is not on the same level as Jordan Poole. That's definitely not the case. And I don't think I would assume it was either. We're going to have to do some remaneuvering. We'll come back to this, though. Uh, Andrew Nemhard, I think he's also another B guy. I agree. Just very solid guy. He kind of came out of – not came out of nowhere, but I think out of the draft, people were like, okay, he's another guard that's going to you know do a lot of things that not everyone's going to do on any given night. And I just feel like as the Pacers have gotten better, he almost like kind of rose up with them in a way. You know what I mean? And especially with Benedict yeah. Matherin, you know, having unfortunately missing a lot of the season. I feel like Nemhard kind of emerged as just like guard off the bench and even in the starting lineup a lot of the times towards the end mm. of the year. And, and he was phenomenal just really in the playoffs. Very solid next to Tyrese Halliburton. I feel like they really complemented each other well, I felt like. And also hit one of the craziest shots of the entire playoffs. So Yeah, 15 points per game in the playoffs, five and a half assists on 56% shooting, 48% from deep. That was a big thing. The three balls on fire out there. He was defending well. Nemhard's numbers are down a little bit compared to some of the other guys at this tier. Like it's not that far down. He was also a now. bench. He was, I think his role like really um, came up though, as the season progressed. Like, I don't think he was playing very, like he was playing, but I don't think he was really playing mm -hmm. that much at the beginning of the year. I could be completely he, he wrong. Was, no, he was playing, but yeah, a lot more coming off the bench. Like if I take a look at his top scoring performances, um, it's like January 26th, January 25th, March 27th. March 22nd, like a lot more second half of the season. It helps too. And, Buddy spots. and that opened up more minutes too. And I, this is one where I feel like I'm almost good with projecting a little bit. I think Nemhard's going to have a really solid season. Yeah, I think he's very, very, like, solid, very solid, either, you know, complimentary guy to Halliburton or even a bench guy. I see yeah. very, very solid. Uh, another guy who I think probably fits in this B spot too is Alex Caruso up next. One of the league's best defenders, efficient scorer. I feel like he kind of fits that. B almost feels like – without Jalen Green's a bit different, but it almost feels like that guy who plays that really solid role for a team. My only thoughts on Caruso is like – do you feel like the offensive like ceiling is – because I just feel like those guys in the B tier maybe provide a little bit more offensively. But Yeah, I mean, Caruso – he had 10 I know points he's a great game, defender, but – 10 points, four rebounds, three and a half assists, uh, shot 40% from deep, 47% from the field. He just doesn't take a lot of shots. So yeah. it's tough, but I guess he was on a bad team too. So, but yeah, I mean, that's also hard. I feel like when you like, he is an all defensive level player. That's an elite skill. I feel like puts him above the other guys in the C. I feel like Michael he's de I would definitely have him as like a B tier guy. I would say at this point in terms of the impact, uh, yeah, Anthony yeah, Edwards, really. obvious S tier. Yeah. No need to have really a conversation about that at all. Um, this gonna, keeps getting better. I'm, I'm excited to see if he kind of fits that. If he tries to sneak into that top five conversation this year. Yeah, to me, the battle for the top shooting guard spot is between Ant, Book, and one more guy that we'll get to. And this year is a big year for that battle. So we'll get to him in a moment. Actually, let's just do it real quick. Uh, Donovan Mitchell yep. is also going to go up in the S tier. These are the S. I feel like I feel good about this S tier. I agree. I'm, do, I'm doing ordering again. That does not matter. Um, but I feel like these three, which is why I want them next to each other, Book, Ant, 
Spida. The battle for the top shooting guard spots between those three, I feel like you could pick any of those guys and you have a good argument. Um, it's kind of just depending on your preference. Donovan Mitchell is the best scorer, I would say, out of any of them. Uh, Ant is, you know, that two-way kind of guy with that explosiveness, but the efficiency is still coming along a little bit. Book is like the best, the best playmaker. It's also pretty well-rounded. All three of these guys do a lot really, really well. I feel like you can't go wrong necessarily with any of these guys as your pick for the best shooting guard in the league. And then I feel like Derek White, we're getting to another A tier guy. Cause I feel like he's like, yeah. he, he's kind of fits the bill of the B tier where he plays like the, like the big role type of, you know, I was gonna say the role role, but you know what I mean? Like he, he play he plays the role. He's not the team's best player, but I feel like he's almost like the all NBA role player, if that makes sense. He like, is one know, of the best role players in the league easily. It might seem crazy to put him up here with like Mikhail Bridges. People might be like gawking at that a little bit. But he is one of the best defensive guards in the entire NBA. Uh, was just all defensive second team, finished top eight in deploy voting, almost a 40% three point shooter in seven attempts per game, which is really good. Five dimes, 15 points. Like Derek White is a superstar role player. And one of those guys that, like, he almost feels like, like we talked about Caruso here in the B tier. He's just like the supersized Caruso, I feel like, at this point, yeah. where he gives you that elite, elite defense, but he's able to take on a bit more volume scoring-wise and create a little bit more, and it, it results in him having immense value to his team. So, yeah, I like having Derek White in the A tier here. I feel like that's something people might not love, because I've learned recently a lot of people do not like Derek White. I think it's just because of the Celtics. People yeah. don't like anybody on the Celtics. But yeah, shout out to Derek White. Just like if you think about it, the dude put up those kind of stats. He was playing behind Tatum, Brown, Porzingis, Holiday. Like, yeah, I don't know, man. It's just, I just think he's a really awesome player, and I would absolutely, if the Sixers could somehow snag him, it would be like I would probably cry in the spot. So yeah, he's like he is also like it's almost like if you combine KCP and Caruso a little bit into a guy, and it's like. like, Derek like White. And like Reeves, you know how Reeves can do a little bit of everything. It's like get Reeves' his ability to do a little bit of everything, along with KCP and Caruso. KCP taking like, those volume shots, the yeah. cruise of defense. Yeah, not saying he is the amalgamation of all those guys, but I see what you're saying. Yeah, he's like the and the role player in the NBA. I would say right now. I feel like, like that's what player. kind of Mikel Bridges was before. You know, he got traded to Brooklyn too. Like I think if mm. people would have described him like that on the Phoenix Suns, and I think we still would have kind of had Brooklyn or Phoenix Suns, but Kel Bridges up here too. So. Yeah. All right. Anthony Simons. I was between B and C. I think I want to go B. Yeah, I think I think offensively, I think he might be just as good, if not better, as most of the guys in that tier. But mm. it just feels like he's just a little bit one dimensional, maybe offensively. Maybe that's yeah. a bad take. But I do I, I do think like the offensive upside is probably honestly, other than Jalen Green on his best nights, probably the best in that B tier. He's yeah, just Simons on a really is... bad team. In a not I feel team. like Simons is going to get traded. The I would really like to see him on a good team. I'd really like to see that. Before the KCP thing, there were a lot of people that were like, Simons to the magic makes sense, but now that doesn't feel like it makes sense. Mm-hmm. So I don't know where he lands, but he's one of those players that I would like to see in a new spot. Just because they have Scoot, they've got Shaden, they added Denny of Dia now. I feel like Simons is going to get a bit lost in the shuffle potentially. Mm-hmm. And also he's 24 when a lot of those other guys are like 20 or 21. Not that that's out of the the timeline or anything like that, because he that's still really young. Like he'd be in his prime in four years, but I don't know. Simon's feels like one of those guys that may not stay in Portland forever. And that could be a chance for him to go ahead and blossom in a new spot. Another guy that I feel like as you, de- you don't want to miss your one option, maybe not your two option, at least definitely not right now, but like maybe in the future. But if you could be like that really good third option on a team, like that would be big as kind of that bucket getting guard. It's still really young too. Again, 24 years old, so it's hard to project. He's a good six man too. Yeah. B2, this is weird because I'm looking at this. I'm like, Cruz is like this elite defender and Monk's like this super six man. And Jim Green, like I've got no idea on some nights. It's because the thing this was, young if, bucket if, getter. You about, if you think about the point guard, like – if you think about point guards and centers, right, I feel like there's very defined roles. So point guards, they need to be able to play make and they need to be able to take over the game. Like the elite point guards, they can take over the game and they play make the heck out of the ball, right? Then you mm-hmm. have the elite centers that can get rebounds, play defense, and score the ball. 
you know, and then there's Jokic who just does everything. Yeah. But I think feel like for like these wing type players, it's like you're gonna have like the Simons who are just the or the, even the Norman Pals who all they do is pretty much get buckets. Then you're gonna have the guys like the. I don't even know if you put them on this list, but like the Josh Hart or like, you know. Hart will be on the small forward The one. Caruso's or like those. And this is kind of for all wings. I just play a lot of defense and they can like, you know, spot up threes and, you know, occasionally make a, you know, a good bucket. It just feels like it's all over the place in terms of like skill sets. Mm-hmm. Like even just looking at the tiers, like even the A tier, I feel like all those players do a lot of different things. Like B tier, yeah. like different things. So S and A, I feel very good about right now. Like looking at S and A, I'm happy with those. Yeah. It's when we get down to like B, C, and D, I'm like, my brain starts to get melted because I have no clue how to. This is why I don't like doing like top 100 player rankings or anything like that because it's so, it's easier within positions because you have kind of have defined roles. It's so hard across the NBA with all these diverse skill sets. Yeah, it's just tough. Like, what do you value? You know, do you value the elite defense of a guy like Caruso? Do you value the bucket getting of a guy like Anthony Simons? And it's also very team dependent too, you know, like, if you need a team that needs more defenders and has a star, you probably want a guy like Alex Caruso. You want someone to just come in and get buckets. Like the Magic could probably have used Alex Simons. It's weird. Uh, we got your guy next, Kelly Oubre. They had him listed as y'all shooting guard. I don't know what your lineup's going to look like. I think that makes the most sense unless it's PG at the two, but he's got more size, so I'd imagine he's the three. But Kelly Oubre, uh, I feel like Oubre's tough. See, Oubre's another guy that I think – Party wants to put on like B, like C plus to B minus. Mm-hmm. I don't know. He's put up, I just, he put up pretty good numbers last year. I feel like he's very high energy. I like he can get you a lot of buckets. Like the three point mm-hmm. shooting can be kind of streaky, but I don't know, man. Yeah. It's just like I have Jordan Poole who just was like unplayable, and then you have Kelly Uber who like I feel like he was saving the team half the time. I'll this is what I'm telling you. We're gonna have this C tier is gonna have to get split up. We're gonna have to move some guys into C and D. We're gonna have to figure that out. Yeah, because I think Kelly Oubre is like. I think he is below these guys. I would pick yeah. most of these guys over Ubre. So I'll put him in C for right now and we'll come back to this. I agree that he is above like pool. Um pool. I probably take I probably take Ubre over everyone in that C tier, at least in my very biased opinion. But <laughs> I think I would assume he was one of those guys. I think I would put in that conversation too. Mm-hmm. Uh Brandon Miller, very interesting guy. If we're talking about projecting think he could have a monster season like he i i wouldn't hate putting him in b tier to be honest i don't hate it either to be honest like i'm good with this i feel like i feel good about putting brandon miller here showed a lot defensively last season and when you take like the efficiency without lamella ball playing for a majority of the season like 44 percent from the field is nothing crazy but 37 percent from deep 17 points per game 4.3 boards um again the defense was pretty solid yeah man Seven, I think he's a big, I agree. I think he's a big breakout candidate. Like it's funny because in the B tier, I feel like a lot of these guys are established, and I feel like Brandon Miller were kind of almost like projecting a little bit because I think his potential is definitely more up there with the A guys. Mm-hmm. But I think like just like where he is right now, I think B fits. His potential could even be up with the S guys if he really, really breaks out. Although not as high as like an Anthony, but maybe not some of these guys. But who knows? You, we'll know, you never know. That's true. He could be the next PG. I know that's kind of a comparison he's gotten a lot of times and. There were a lot of games last season where he looked like the next PG. Uh, Dante DiVincenzo is up next. I was thinking you have him over. I was almost thinking B. I think he was crazy with the Knicks last year, and I think he was really Ra- good with Randall going out. I think we kind of saw the best version of DiVincenzo we've seen since probably when he was on Milwaukee. Yeah, Dante was good. Fifteen points, three point seven rebounds, two point seven assists. Now, if you yeah. if you if you butter knife that until like from like the last two or three months of the season, like, I think he's averaging way over twenty a game, like twenty five yeah, five. Let me go to his game log for the season. Actually, let me do Stat Muse, not sponsored. Um, do you like Dante even Chenzo without Julius Randle last year? Chenzo stats sits. I'm gonna do stats since like February first. Okay, twenty twenty four. Uh, after February 1st, 20.4 points, yeah. 4.3 rebounds, and 3.2 assists. Like he was absolutely insane. Yeah, the average, like the shooting splits, uh, just 43% from the field. But he, there were some games he was taking like 30 shots, I felt like. 38% from deep, though, in 11.7 attempts, which is nuts. Yep. Volume shooting. So I'm cool with this. It also feels like the B, the B tier is so weird. This is such a weird tier. Uh, Cam Thomas, he feels like a C guy to me. I think he's a C guy. Like, I like Cam Thomas. I don't think he's going to – he's not this 
burgeoning all-star guard at least not yet like a lot of people think it seemingly he started the season great like he was on fire he did finish with 22 and a half points per game so he almost now like he kind of feels like simon's almost the more that i'm looking at his game but i don't know man i think with cam thomas i'm not trying to say cam thomas puts up like empty stats or anything but i just it's like how much of cam thomas is just putting a really good status on a bad team like I really want to see him in like a winning scenario in a bigger role because when his first season was 2021, 2022, and that was, you know, during the uh, KD Kyrie Harden days, but that was a season that Harden got traded. Uh, they dealt with injuries. Like I, Cam Thomas really hasn't got a chance to play with a winning squad at all. So I don't know. It's, he's a very weird player. Again, I think we're going to do some splitting up here. So we'll come back to him. Uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich kind of feels like another B guy. Yeah, just like a really good six man. I'll say <laughs> the B tier is so funny, man. It is. It feels so crowded. Um, we'll just we'll, we'll have to go back and revamp at the end. I say put him in B for now, though. But B- Bogey had such a good season. He had 17 points per game, shot around 37 and a half percent from deep. He had a good year. Uh, Kevin Herter, probably, I think C. Yeah, it was not Kevin Herter's best year. No. I think maybe Hawks, prime Hawks Kevin Herter would have fit a little bit more of those B-tier guys. You know, lockdown shooter who can play a little bit of def- a defense. But he was kind of rough on the Kings last year. Yeah, not Kevin Herter's best season. Uh, Colin Sexton might be a low-key B guy. I was going to say high-key B guy. He had a really okay. solid year last year. All right, I, I'm just I want I want to put that out there and soft launch it in case you got really mad at me. And you're once again, like, another guy that's kind of on a bad team, but I think it was some of the best bats because remember when Sexton was like a young upcoming player and we actually thought you know not that we thought he was gonna be this perennial all star, but I think there was a lot of hope for him and then he kind of like had this little fall off and I feel like he's kind of on the on the come up now, but more so just I think people have come to realize his ceiling is maybe just as like a very solid player and not like an all star. Yeah, Sexton was n- n- so nice. One, Honestly, if you ask me to pick a player that right now is really good and people don't realize it, that when he gets to a new destination, like say the Jazz side to trade him this year or something like that, if I had to pick a player in a new destination that would get so much love across the league, Sexton is that guy. Like imagine Sexton was a Laker. People would love Colin Sexton. <laughs> he is not talked about nearly enough. 18.7 points, almost 50, 40, 90 like it was 49, what, 39, 86. What were his minutes? Because there were so many times last year, and I only know this because I'm a degenerate gambler sometimes during the NBA season, where I felt like the Jazz would either be getting blown out or they would kind of like not really give him full minutes and they would let some of the young guys play. Because I felt like he wasn't playing much more than like 32 minutes a game. Played 26.6 minutes per game. Yep, exactly. He put up those numbers. Sexton was so mm-hmm. nice last season, and I don't think people appreciate it enough. I'm glad we're in agreement on the Colin Sexton love. I was worried you were going to be like B tier. No, God. no, no, no. I, I, I'm woke to the Colin Sexton hype because okay. I knew he wasn't playing crazy minutes and put up good stats. Yeah, he knew, like did not start every – because there was that moment midseason where they put him into the starting lineup and suddenly the Jazz started winning a bunch of games. Like mm-hmm. They kind of figured it out and then they fell off a little bit. But there was that one stretch where they were like, oh, let's start Sexton, and then boom, like they took off. Uh, Marcus Smart, maybe B as well. He's tough, man, because he didn't really play much last year. Yeah, it was not a season where he played 20 games, um, 14.5 points per game, shot like 31% from deep, 43% from the field. And it was on a Grizzly team that didn't have John Morant. He did still have 2.1 steals. He's still a good defender. Uh, the efficiency, you know, is going to be up and down. It's hard to really say. Just going off of what we last saw from him in Boston, he was really good. So I'm good with putting him in B if you are. Yeah. yeah, he's one of those players that's almost hard to pick. Not nearly at the level of like Lonzo, who we talked about a bit in the point guard mm-hmm. tier list because he wasn't on there because we haven't seen him playing forever. But it does feel like it's been a minute since we saw Marcus Smart play, even though I guess it was only one season. But yeah. Um, Brandon Pajemski feels like a C. Yeah, I think a C too. Like very, he's, I think he has a lot of potential, and I think he could maybe make that jump, especially because it seems like the Warriors are going to give him a big role this year. With Clay they Thompson love this man. They do. They adore Brandon Podjemski. And I do like pods a lot, but they are like, we will die for Brandon Podjemski over there <laughs> in that front office, which I can appreciate. All right. Zach Levine. Is he almost still in put, I almost want to put him in B, but I don't know. Levine feels like one of those guys 
that if he gets traded, because this past year was not good for him. He had a bad year. He only played 25 games, 19.5 points per game, four assists, five rebounds. Efficiency was the worst it had been in a minute. It just it kind of looks like he didn't care out there a lot of the time. And I wonder if that how much of that was he's playing for the Bulls and he wants to be traded, how much of that was kind of a fall off. I just – I don't know. Because all these guys appeared pretty good seasons in the A tier when they were healthy. I don't know. But it feels weird putting him in the same tier as some of these guys in B tier, you know, for Levine. I think for the upside, he's still an A tier player. But I, I do think, though, that he's on the he's on the watch list. Yeah, well, I think we'll, for pure we'll, upside, I think he's still probably up there. We'll talk about that one. Uh, Herb Jones pre- feels like a pretty solid B. Yeah, just me. Good role, play, plays good defense, can spot up shoot. Yeah, one of the best promoter defenders in the in the entire world. I'm going to go again with the world thing. Noah Lyles um, better not be listening, man. He's going to no have Lyle, right with you. Not even Noah Lyles can hate Herb Jones. Everyone loves Herb Jones. One of the best promoter defenders in the game. I was shooting threes really well last season, especially from the corners. Herb is amazing. No doubt. Uh, Devin Vassell feels like another B-tier guy. Yeah, we might need to split up the B-tier. We'll see. We might need to. But I feel like we need to split up some other ones. We would have to make like a B-plus tier or something like that. But pretty good season from Devin Vassell. It was uh, right under 20 points per game, 37% from deep. I think with Chris Paul in town as well, and as Wemby gets better and takes more pressure off, Vassell is only going to get better too. So, yeah, I'm I'm still Devin Vassell, pretty strong believer. Yeah, his counting him. stats may uh, go down a little bit, but I think as like a holistic player, I think he's going to get better. Yeah, and that better. efficiency is going to keep – with Chris Paul in town, depending on how much he plays, because we'll have to see on that front, he likes to get injured recently. But, yeah. Uh, Gary Trent Jr. I think it's C. I think it's C as well. Yeah, this C tier feels weird. feels very strange. As currently constructed, I guess – yeah, I guess C tier. We haven't done anyone in D tier in so long. Because Gary Trent last year was 13.7 points per game, 40% from deep. He was fine. He was on a bad Raptors team, so it's hard to say. I'm really excited to see him with the Bucks back in a winning scenario for the he first time. He was good time as, a, as a, like first... a winning as a role player of like when the Raptors were good and when the Blazers were good. Gary Trent Jr. is a really solid role player. Yeah, it's gonna be exciting to see him back in a winning scenario. And I think he can rebuild a lot of his value across the league. I'm I know you were a big Gary Trent believer. Mm-hmm. I saw him torch the thunder a lot with the Blazers, so I'm also still a believer. Yeah. Uh Tyler Hero. He's a guy that's he's an A B tweener, I feel like. He to me feels like Zach Levine. Well, no, I, I don't know. Zach Levine's also again, there was the weird season with him. What do we have for hero stats? Hero, it was 21 points per game, five and a half rebounds, four and a half assists, 44% from the field, 39.6% from deep. I think that's A tier. I feel like it's A tier too, but I don't know. The more I'm looking at now, I feel worse. When we start going through it, I feel worse about A tier. Okay, the fact that we have no one in F tier, we need to switch things up. I feel All right. like. Let's start I, feel from, like, I think it's better to start from the bottom. I agree. I Who think do you we want to move to F. I think we move Grady Dick down to F. Just because it was kind of just the end of the season where he really started to pop off and find his rhythm. I think this year you're going to have a really good season. But just going off of last year, he was probably one of the worst shooting guards out of this entire list. So I've got to move him down there. All right, then who from C tier do you think fits more in the D tier? Like who's who's not as good as some of the other people on the C tier? Who do you think? I know we hyped up Jordan Poole, but now the more I think about his numbers last season, how rough it was at times, I almost want to move him down. To I, see, you move, I feel like you can move Herder down. He was pretty bad last year. Herder did have a bad season. I'm trying to think of how much I'm projecting with Dyson Daniels. I feel, But he's just such a good defender. He's so good defensively. Connor loves Dyson Daniels as D. He just can't get over it. That is a crazy sentence to throw out there. I'm a Dyson Daniels believer. And so it's hard. Terrence Mann, I also feel like could go down. Terrence Mann should not be an F, bro. Clippers have to be so mad. He's not like that bad. I'm not. He's not bad. He's a like. I don't feel like there's anybody on this list that's that bad. Like Jordan Poole, I think had an awful season, but I think as a player, there is still upside there. Like Jay Nivey didn't have a fantastic season. The Pistons sucked, but like I don't know if there's anybody on this list that I think is a bad player. No. So that's what makes it so hard. <laughs> the B tier, we have like 47 players. But remember, it's relative, relative. It is relative. So how? So you said there's 38 players, right? Yes. So if we want to make it like a bell curve, 
Oh god, not the bell curve again. You know what I mean? We need like yeah. it depends how you want to do it. Like, should we bell curve it? I don't know if I want to. The A tier. I'm trying to decide how I feel about Zach Levine in the A tier. I don't feel great, to be honest. We can move him to B. I think he's definitely the worst of that list. I think Hero deserves to stay, to be honest. I think I'm good with moving him down. But just like, do you think is Zach Levine on the same level as Marcus Smart? I don't know, to be honest. Because, well, don't ask about Smart in particular, because that's weird. I guess it's more so like, is he on the same level as like, you know, like Dante DiVincenzo, I guess? I'm not saying he's the worst on the, the list. I don't know, man. The right. way DiVincenzo was hooping last year towards the end. The problem with Levine is he doesn't defend. He's kind of a black hole on offense. And last year was a bad year offensively for him. So I just don't know where he's at. I'm also trying to figure out, am I falling into the same trap that we talked about earlier, mm. where it's like, we am I thinking about the contract? Because, yeah, he is massively overpaid. Well, what were his stats the year before? The year prior, it was – let me go back to the basketball reference page. 25 points per game, 4.5 rebounds, 4.2 assists. Uh, forty-eight point five percent from the field, thirty-seven point five percent from deep. Like that's borderline S tier, probably. But yeah, I, just, I guess I'm okay with putting an A tier. I don't know how much I should take into account. I I feel like with that and the the previous two years, he was being an all star. The only thing is, like, I would for sure, ra- I would definitely rather have Derek White on my team. I would rather have Mikael Bridges on my team. I'd rather have Chris Middleton on my team. Like CJ McCollum is kind of interesting. I think contract wise, yeah, I'd rather on my team. I'd, I'd rather have everyone else on this tier list, except for maybe Bradley Beal with the contracted balls. Well, then you look ben at the Levine. B tier. How many guys in B tier would you rather have on your team over Zach Levine? I feel like I'd not a lot, at least in my opinion. If, if, I if guess if we're if we're not player. taking into account contract, yeah, just the player. Don't worry, you can't talk player. about the player. We're not we're not doing a tier list on how how good are you based on how much money you make. Yeah. That would be a fun uh, one. Though. Okay, let, let's. I'll leave him here, there for right now. Um, is there anyone in the C tier you would consider moving down to the D tier? It's just it's, re- it's honestly, relevant. I'm kind of tempted. I am kind of tempted now. I think, but to move Dyson Daniels down only because the offense was so rough last year, and I, f- I think I'm projecting more. It's just we I need think, to make this. We just need to make it more relative. It's just he's a, the 29th. He's the 37th or 38th best in this list. F tier does not mean he sucks. It just means he's the second worst on this list. Okay. I feel. Do we move Jordan Poole down? Well, I guess do. And just here, let's start with this. Is there anyone on the B tier you think you should move to C? I don't know. Like that's the hard part. I don't even know if I do. Simons feels like someone who could theoretically move down because he is so bad defensively, but it often like the offensive pop is absolutely there. Um. I think I'm just a little bit biased. I feel like some of these guys in B tier who are like solid defenders, but don't do a lot on offense. I'm like, are they more C guys? Like, I'm not trying to hate on like a Caruso or like a Herb or a Smart, but like. See, that the problem with those guys specifically, like, I mean, Smart is Herb last year, but Caruso and Herb, it's not just that they're good defenders. They are some of the best perimeter defenders in the world. And mm-hmm. I think that I value that elite skill over someone who can get buckets probably somewhat inefficiently like some of the other guys. Which is why I just think the B tier is just going to be a, like a humble jumbled mess because you're yeah. going to have a guy like Simons who can, who's arguably like, I'm not saying he's a generational offensive player. That's such a bad thing to say, but he's a dude that would, he's a really good offensive, player. really good offensive player who plays no defense. And then you have Caruso, very good defensive player who puts up low volume offense. So it's just like, I think the B tier is just going to be like that for the shooting guard, just because there are so many different variations of like a good player for the shooting guard. Hmm. Yeah. I don't even know how much I want to change. So who on the, is there anyone on the C tier you think is not that you want to bring down? Um, I don't know. Like, honestly, like, do you think Herter and pods are still good to be there? Like Pods is Pods is young. Herder had a bad year. For Pods, um, let me see. Because yeah, I mean, I guess last year was nine point two six rebounds, three point seven assists. He was a pretty solid defender for rookie, especially thirty eight point five percent free throws. For some reason, he's a break on free throws, sixty three point three percent. Although oh, it was only one, nice. only one point one attempts, <laughs> only one point one attempts per game. I yeah, heard but, don't hate the list the way it looks now. 
Honestly, the more I think about it, I might move Pods down to D. I feel like Pods and Christian Brown are pretty similar players, at least leaving this season. I think Pods definitely has more potential than Christian Brown. But honestly, I think I'm okay with moving him to D. Okay. I feel like we need to even out a little bit. What about Pool? Um, pool. Yeah, like like Podjemski had a better season than Pool. I think just taking into account the inefficiency from Pool because it was bad last season, bro. Four forty one point three percent from the field, thirty two point six percent from deep. I think I'm okay with moving Pool down to the D tier after last season, which sucks because we just talked them all up. Like we're still both Pool believers in some way. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we just, do he definitely has way team. more upside than those guys in D tier. And even arguably, I'd say he probably is the most upside in the guys in C tier too, at least as of now. Yeah. Kevin Hurd is a guy I could talk myself into moving down just because it was it was a bad year for Herder. What was it? What was the bad year? What do we got exactly? Um uh, 36% from deep, which isn't terrible, but it's down from 40% the season prior. Uh he played less, he did play less minutes. Uh, 10.2 points per game down from 15.2. He kind of just regressed in a number of spots. And a lot of that was, again, he took less shots. He played less minutes. But some of that came because he was not playing up to the level that he was last season. So it's kind of a, a cyclical thing. It is tough for me because, like, I'm, a, I'm I'm being a hater or I'm being a Sixers believer. But, like, Kelly Oubre was so much better than Kevin Herter last year. I'm down to move Herter down. Okay. Uh, I'm, da- I'm also kind of down to move Gary Trent down. I don't think – I feel like Gary Trent is an odd man out. I also – I can't even lie. I feel like now I'm getting, ha- like, too trigger happy with it. Mm-hmm. I could also theoretically move Jay Ivey down. I like Ivy in the C tier because of the potential of the young player. But how much are we taking into account the potential, you know? Because, like, Paz has a bunch of potential and Poole still got well, a lot Ivy's of shown way more than Paz has so far in the NBA, I feel like. I guess it depends what you're looking at. And same with, like, Cam Thomas and DeSumo. It's just, like, I'm thinking about – I. I don't know. The thing is, too, you're moving all these guys down from C tier. I don't see anyone in the B tier I would move down unless we're going with the guys that don't put up the mm-hmm. high numbers. Yeah. I mean, do we just leave it like this then? Is this good? I personally don't hate the B tier simply because I feel like there are so many different archetypes. Yeah. I'm biased. I think Uber should probably be in B tier, but that's okay. But I understand he's not as good as some of the high end players. But I do think he's like, you know what I mean? Uber, but, honestly, the big thing for Uber was just the three point shooting. It was thirty one percent last year. It was bad. I know he's so very streaky. streaky. It's so streaky. There he would have a game where he'd go five for six and then shoot over seven. So I get it. Yeah, that's the tough thing for me. But he did provide a lot for that squad all throughout the year. So I get it completely. Honestly, I think this year Uber is going to be more effective as well. Now that PG's in town and you've got Max and Embiid, all these guys taking pressure off of him. Because there were a lot of games last season when the Sixers were decimated and they asked him to just take a bunch of shots more than he probably otherwise would have. So yeah, Uber is one of those players that's a bit weird. <sighs> Smart's also tough because I don't know what we're going to see from him, but just because he was that elite defender last time, like he's a really good player. So I'm going to put him at, I think B's fine. I feel all right about this. Honestly, the guy I feel the worst about here is Io DeSumo. I love Io's game. He's so good. I almost feel like Io, Ubre, and Norman Powell. And I mean, I guess maybe you could throw Cam Thomas in there, depending on how much. I almost feel like these guys are like a C plus almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think DeSumo, like, it's, he kind of falls into the trap that Ubre does. I think he's really good. I just think the guys above them are just all pretty solid. Yeah. Uh, I'm just, a, I'm a big Io DeSumo believer. I'm tempted to move Gary Trent down. That's the last move I'm tempted to make. No, go for it. Just because... I think he's going to be better, but I understand. Like last season, I guess he did shoot like a 40% from deep, six and a half attempts a game, field goal percentage was rough. Yeah, I don't know. He's just one of those guys I feel like kind of just... Although I guess his stats were pretty similar to Norman Powell, now that I'm looking at it. Um, Like Norm's definitely more efficient, though, and put up like, I guess, a little bit more points per game. I'll move Gary Trent down. Oh, maybe I'm a hater. I feel like Ubre and DeSumo are better than the other three. Maybe I'm a hater, but I do. I mean, I, that's what I'm talking about. I feel like there's like a C plus tier almost, you know? Yeah. In the C tier, but like I wouldn't put. I don't think. I don't know if I'd move them up to a B. Probably not. Let's let's just leave it. I think we could do this literally all night. Um, yeah, I can. Rock. I'm I'm cool with this. I'm gonna zoom out so we can get the whole tier list in. 
This is our tier list. So I'm gonna read off if they're listening on audio, like start from yeah, the bottom top. Real quick, I want to say I feel more confident, I think, in our point guard tier list than this one. It's probably also because there's more players. As you have more players, it's gonna get more and more difficult. Mm-hmm. But S tier, we have Booker, Ant, Donovan Mitchell, Kyrie Irving. A tier, we have Chris Middleton, Mikhail Bridges, Bradley Beal, CJ McCollum, Derek White, Tyler Hero, Zach Levine. That still does feel like Zach Levine, maybe A minus. Uh B tier, we have Malik Monk, Jalen Green, Austin Reeves, KCP, Andrew Nemhard, Alex Caruso, Anthony Simons, Brandon Miller, Dante DiVincenzo, Bogdan Bogdanovich, Colin Sexton, Marcus Smart, Herb Jones, and Devin Vassell. A very full of guys tier. I don't hate the B tier. I think it's pretty solid. C tier, we have Kelly Oubre, Iota Sunmu. Kelly Oubre does feel weird the more I think about it. Iota Sunmu, Norman Powell, Cam Thomas, Jay Nivey. D tier right now we have Terrence Mann, Christian Brown, Brandon Pajemski, Jordan Poole, Kevin Herter, Gary Trent Jr. I like the D tier. I think the D tier makes sense. I think it's, I'm cool with that. F tier we have Dyson Daniels and Grady Dick. That's our F tier. Yeah. How you feel? Dick at F. That's tough. <laughs> yeah. But no, I'm cool with it. It's just like I don't want to like beat a dead horse, but I just feel like the beat, like I said a hundred times already, shooting guards and just wings in general, I think we're going to run into the exact same problem with small forwards, is you have guys that are good for different reasons. You have Alex Caruso as a very valuable player because he can spot up and play elite defense. And then you have Anthony Simons because he can go out there and give you 25 a game. So mm. I just think it just depends on what you value on any given night and, you know, depending on their situation. And then we fall back into the trap of like the Zach Levine, like, yeah, he's – his stats were pretty mid, but like he's still averaging 20 points a game, but he makes $50 million. So it's just like. It's hard also to, I feel like with a lot of these shooting guards, like the roles are going to differ a ton this season. Like uh, Zach Levine, what, what happens with him this year? You know, um, Marco Smart, how does he look with John Morant and Desmond Bain is a good example of this. What does Caruso look like over in Oklahoma City? Can Nemhar continue the playoff breakout? Brandon or, Miller you know, break out some more. Exactly. Brandon Miller, I wouldn't be surprised if he's up here in the A next season mm-hmm. when we redo this. Uh, it's it's tough right now, but I feel okay about this for the moment. There are a couple moves I might make. I wish we had. Obviously, we're not going to make them, but like a, I feel like a plus and a minus for every tier would make this so much more precise. But we're going to go with this for the moment. This is our shooting guard tier list down below in the comments. Let us know what did you think. What was our biggest miss? What do you agree with? Just in general, disagree with as well. Uh, yeah, we'll drop the shooting guard or the small four tier list rather next week is the hope to do it again on Monday. Just kind of keep doing this weekly every Sunday night. So be on the lookout for that and let us know like right away, you know, who would you put in the S tier for small forwards? Is there anyone else you would have put in S tier here, taken out of S tier? What do you hate about we, our list? Let us hear it. Yeah, just in general, honestly, I think most of the comments are going to be what they hate about our list. That was kind of what happened with the point guard one, which we do appreciate that. Uh, y'all showed a ton of support. That was our best video in the last 10, especially since we made this little comeback kind of thing. That video did really, really well. So we appreciate y'all. As always, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed here over, over here on YouTube. Uh, comment something. Tell Brian good luck on the GRE, whatever you want to do. Uh, go ahead as well. And if you're on Spotify, download it, break five stars, come over to YouTube, hang out. You know, the visual episodes are cool and everything, especially for these tier lists. It's probably easier to go out and view it that way. But yeah, we appreciate y'all tuning in. Ryan, you got anything you want to go and wrap up with? Uh, comment the worst pick that Connor made all, all video. Down okay. Below. Go ahead and do that. Uh, <laughs> Terrence, the Terrence man defenders are going to be out in full force. Dude, for just him. remember, Terrence, Connor won Terrence man F tier. Just putting it out there clippers fans i he's in the d tier i need to wrap this up before you spread more misinformation uh one more time thank you for watching we will see y'all later peace